You know, it's interesting because coming into the year, almost everyone agreed you probably should load up on dividend paying stocks. Now, let's take a look. These are these are what you call a high yield dividend stocks. And well, here's the problem, right? Investors, people who like stocks have opted in instead, you know, for different kind of stocks. Uh, and, and people who like yield have opted for money markets and treasuries. The bottom line is it's left really no buyers for these high dividend yielding stocks. So they've been under pressure. But if you go back to 2001, I mean, that's what you call easy money, folks. The beginning of this year, we kind of thought we were going to get a repeat of that, but then all of a sudden it just fizzled out, and we've been under pressure ever since. But my next guest says that might be about uh, ready to change. I want to bring in BMO Capital Markets Chief Investment Strategist Brian Belsky. Hey, Brian, uh, welcome to the show. So you're saying, I mean, I like the risk reward here, and obviously these are high dividend yields, you know, so, but you're thinking it's overdue in part because of the 4 PE ratio. Walk us through this. I do. So thank you so much for having us. It's great to be back. Uh, you know, the month of October was tough on these high yielding companies, uh, principally because of what happened uh, in the bond market. And we started to see the last kind of week or so of October, it began to change a little bit with so much focus on the Magnificent Seven being sold off. Uh, I think a lot of people were missing the fact that utilities in, in some of these higher yielding uh, areas have been just decimated. So if you take the top 25% yielding companies, that would be 125 stocks in the S&P 500, and you look at, let's say, like a forward peg ratio, these companies are trading at 30 or 40 basis points below their long-term average when you compare their next year's earnings to their growth rate. That's providing some significant value. We as strategists for years have been talking about dividend growth versus dividend yield. That's what you really want to buy. But I think people that got slammed that they they're just simplistic. Uh, they sim uh, they were looking at yields in too much of a simplistic manner and really got buried in these stocks. I just saw a great academic paper. I'm going to have to tell you about it. And I'll tweet about it. I just have a mental block uh, over the weekend that talked about this because listen, some of these yield growers sometimes you can uh, increase your yield by a penny, right? And you're still an aristocrat and those kind of things. I think to your point. But here's what uh, just so folks, I'm putting on one of your charts on the screen for the audience to see. Uh, the next 12 months P.E. ratio uh, is down. I mean, that looks extraordinarily cheap right there. And then, uh, of course, uh, Brian, you're talking about the growth potential. We're seeing the growth potential of these yield companies turn higher. This has the peg ratio is low. And here's your peg ratio, 1.36 versus a 20-year average of 1.76. All of this looks fantastic. Do you, go with, do you go with something like an ETF or do you look for individual opportunities? It's a great question. We would look for uh, individual opportunities, especially given the fact that, you know, it's an overused phrase, but we're in a stock picker's market. I think we're entering a period of moderation where you want to own a lot of everything. So let's call it value stocks, growth stocks, dividend growth stocks, dividend yielding stocks, and oh, by the way, small cap. So you always want to buy, I don't know, someone told me once, buy low, sell high. <laughs> and these companies have just been decimated, brother. And so I think it's time to find the best growing areas uh, that are the most attractive that the market's really beaten up on. Although we have to admit that buy high and, and buy higher has worked with the Magnificent Seven. Would you be buying any of those? You know, we own in, in the 10 portfolios that we run for BMO uh, in terms of our separately managed accounts, we own five of the seven. And we're big believers that the majority of those are more consumer staplish tech. So we would hold those as core positions. And we, as you know me for a long time, I love tech longer term. And I think the theme of AI is a real theme. All right. And bottom line, too, before I let you go, Fed done. Is the Fed done? Yes, Fed's done. Yeah. Hey, Brian, it's been too long. I want to uh, get you in the studio again. It's been too long, my man. I'll see you in a couple of weeks for our forecast. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, folks. We'll be right back.